Mount St. Helens. Beauty and flourishing life where once was devastation and death. A cycle we have seen before and we'll see again. Mount St. Helens is in Washington State. It's about 60 miles off Highway 5, about 70 miles north of Portland, and about 150 miles south of Seattle. Once a 9,700-foot cone-shaped stratovolcano, Mount St. Helens erupted in 1980, sending an ash cloud thousands of feet high. The explosion blew off the top and north side of the mountain devastated the forests for miles. The mountain is now a national monument and a research site on the re-emergence of a forest from complete annihilation. Almost 30 years later, moss covers the ground as far as the eye can see. Wildflowers bloom as tiny streams weave their way across the plain. Tiny trees and bushes sprout up from the soil in a reminder to us all that life will find a way. It's the mouth of a volcano. Yes, mouth and lava tongue. A body, a monstrous living body, both male and female. It emits, ejects. It is also an interior, an abyss. Something alive that can die. Something inert that becomes agitated. Now and then, existing only intermittently constant menace. If predictable, usually not predicted. Capricious, untamable, malodorous. Is that what's meant by the primitive? Nevada del Ruiz, Mount St. Helens, La Soufrerie, Mount Pele, Krakatoa, Tambora. The slumbering giant that wakes. The lumbering giant who turns his attentions to you, King Kong, vomiting destruction and then sinking back to silence. Susan Sontag, the volcano lover. <laughs> 